Okay, let's start with a viewer question, then continue with Friday's trades current positions and finish with Monday's watch list and Friday's breakouts and breakdowns. So someone on Twitter asked me, how can I have so many positions? How can I manage so many positions at, and at the same time enter new ones? And the simple answer is I really don't manage them that much. L like most of my positions are well, like I have some nice profits on them. They're very far from my entry <clears throat> and they're usually far from my stop barriers. Let, let's say pixel works, for example, I mean from 375. Right, so it's not even close to my stop at 370. URA, I'm short from uh, like 1920 or something like that, or 1915 or whatever. And you know, it's not even close to to my entry. It's CLF. I mean, from 10, I think I mean from 1060 average. I bought it at 1040, and then I added a 1080 after the offering, so I'm about 1060 average, it's not even close to being near my stop or near my entry. But this one actually is kind of close to my entry. So, so there's really not that much to manage. So on some of these things, I, I do set alerts if, if I feel like they are kind of close to potentially stopping me out intraday. And on some of these that are very close, that I think may stop me out near the open, uh, I, I just set stops on them. So, that, so I don't have to watch them right out of the gate, because there's so many other things to do. So, like OCLR, I'm from like, in like 985, it's not even close to my stop. Kala, I mean, I'm from like 7, I actually, I'm in here, 7, 655. It's so, so far above my any stop areas. They're just I I mostly don't even watch these things intraday. I ju I su just may look at them near the open if I get get uh, a few seconds over from watching everything else, uh, and then I may look at them quickly midday and then before they close just to see if they close well or if I have to take some profits or size down or anything. So I hope this answers the question. Even though I may have, you know, a bunch of positions, I may only like watch a few of them closely because they are near my entry or near my my stops. Okay, so uh, Friday's trades. Let's start with CLF. Didn't do anything. Actually pulled back slightly. Wicks had a little bit of a weak open, then it just grinded back rest of the day. It was actually kind of close stopping me out, or maybe a dollar from getting stopped out, so it wasn't that close. Uh, Netties just went sideways. CLVS, it had some, as you know, I anticipated a little bit of breakdown on this one on Thursday, but it had uh, positive broker comments. And the stock just broke out of this tight consolidation. Now this is a good, actually this is a good long setup. I just passed on it. I got stopped out at 63 and then just went straight higher and I kind of dropped it off radar. But if I hadn't been short, I would maybe have bought it. Because this is a very good long setup. Mm, CMBX, actually I'm going to go through this trade later. Uh, CLA, you, oh, actually, CLA, I added to my existing position here at 9.10. I only added a small thousand shares. It's kind of a thin stock. Had some decent volume, but, you know, these kinds of setups are very obvious. So everyone's chasing it. And you see this high volume candle here. Every, everyone's chasing it. Uh, I kind of hope it shakes them out, you know, so I can potentially get an even better setup maybe a few days or a few weeks from now when no one is watching it when well that's not so obvious uh, let's see 
So Polat didn't do anything. Pixelworks didn't do anything. OCLR. So I actually added to this one. I've been talking about this one before. I think it can go to 12, 13 plus in the next few weeks or months. So I added to it here in the 1095 area. I'm going to use this 1050 area as my stop for the ads. So I, I bought 10,000 shares to begin with and I scaled out 3,000 here when it stalled out and I just put those 3,000 shares back on with a tighter stop. CTR, CTRL didn't do anything. Now the CNAB um, went up nicely. Uh, and I locked in some more profits. I have locked in about a third, actually a quarter or so of my shares so far. Uh, it had some weird print just after the market closed. It had a print of like 100 shares, 20, 20 cents. Uh, and that's in, in after hours. And there's really no after hours and OTCs, as you know. They don't trade. Um, outside you no know, regular hours but just some weird random market maker print uh, so so i'm not down 7300 on this position i'm, I'm up like two three thousand on it so that's a just a wrong number and um vrx i was short from thursday i covered some near the open gap down a little bit i still think it may go to this low mid low 15s a tiny position just i'm just gonna let it ride with a break even stop Oh, I see chart into anything now. Tesla, what a beast from my short, just absolute, absolute monster. I covered some more near the open and midday. <clears throat> I'm thinking about maybe adding back some if it gets to this high 270 area on Monday. Maybe add back a couple of hundred shares and use like a tight stop on it. URA pulled back a little bit more, bounced a little bit of the 10 day rising moving average. So I covered some more. Probably gonna use this 1870 area as my stop on the rest. I only have a third of my shares left. Tesla also, I only have a third left. Labu, what a monster. You know, it was a little bit extended, tried to pull back, put in another higher low. So you can see just higher lows all the way, put in another higher low and just went straight up on Friday. Just absolute beauty. I'm gonna try to hold this position for a while. Maybe it can go to like mid-high 50s or something. Mm. ATH got stopped out of my last shares. As you know, I bought it here. It went straight up and scaled out on the way up and just a beautiful trade. Recent IPO. Just, you know, like just memorize this kind of a pattern. This is just uh, so textbook, it's just, I mean, you have a recent IPO, you have a range, you have higher lows, you have breakout on above average volume, it's just so textbook, it's just a five star chart. Mm, CMBX, actually I'm going to go through CSAM first. Uh, I actually kind of anticipated a run on this thing. It's holding up very well. There's probably an offering coming any day, so it's very dangerous to hold it long overnight. Can <clears throat> the offering price could easily be like a dollar lower or something. But uh, every day they don't do an offering overnight. This thing could, one of these days, it could squeeze, could, could put in another big candle. Who knows? So I'm just stalking it. I was a little bit too aggressive on it. I tried it twice and... Uh, Got stopped out both times. Uh, C, no, what's the ticker? Yeah, CMBX. So this was my main trade. I shorted it. Let's look at the five minute chart. Shorted it when it went red. Um, then it went green again. Took out the eyes of the day. I covered most of my shares, uh, but I decided to keep 4,000 shares, like a, like a core position that I was thinking. I just didn't care about it, you know, 4,000 shares, I was thinking, you know, it goes up another dollar or dollar 52 bucks, whatever. Uh, and unfortunately, it did go up another dollar. <laughs> so, kind of grinded me. Went straight up, so I started adding back here when it showed some, 
um, like the momentum started stalling a bit, so I added back. Um, I missed. I tried to cover some here, but I missed this uh, low 340s, so I never got filled on those. I was, wasn't fast enough. And then here, if you look at the chart here, it looked like it was gonna break down. Of this uh, late day breakdown uh, below this range, so I tried to locate more shares, but both of my brokers that had shares had restricted it during the day, so I couldn't get more. And then it started kind of grinding back, you know, it put in higher lows, and so I saw the danger. So it, instead of covering, since I didn't have any borrows, I was afraid, I really want to be in this short, it's, it's gonna crack. It's gonna crack one of these days, like maybe Monday, probably Monday, but uh, uh, it can obviously go higher too. So, so I I I, I boxed. I started boxing it uh, in the like 390s, like mid 390s, 410 area, 14s, and uh, I basically boxed a third of my position here, another third here, and <laughs> another third here. So it was kind of a stoop. That last. That last third was kind of stupid. I should have, could have just let it go, like 5,000 shares, whatever. Uh, then it just crapped out, and I was fully boxed, and it, it just didn't change my PNL at all. So it's just kind of a stupid box attempt, at least the last third. Mm. But I unboxed some into the close, so I'm about. 40% box on these shares. So this is the account where I shorted the uh, shares. As you can see, my average is 370, which isn't the best, since I have about 4,000 shares from this three, actually like 295 average or something like that, 293. So that kind of screwed up my average. And this is where I boxed it. <laughs> As you can see, this is basically my last third, um, mostly which I got some really bad fields on, like a very thin OTC names. So I got filled there in the low, low mid three, 40, 430s. Just a stupid box attempt. Probably one of my worst box attempts ever. Uh, but it is what it is. Um, I, I think Monday is gonna be the ideal, ideal scenario if this thing gaps up, pushes to like 450, or maybe even five bucks or, or something out of the gate that it's just, fades the rest of the day. Um, that would be the ideal scenario, but we'll see what happens. Uh, this thing can go to 556 or something on Monday. It can do it, so it's not something you can just short at any price, any size. Uh, and I, I really hope there will be shares available because I want to get this position up to like 25, 30,000 shares. Right now I only have 15, so one of these days it's gonna be down a buck, buck fifty, and I wanna be there with at least twenty, pr preferably thirty thousand shares, maybe even more. But again, it's an OTC, so the problem is the fields. So I'm always afraid of OTCs. Can't really, even though you could do size on this thing, it's pretty liquid. But just OTC fields are so horrible, and I'm not really good at trading OTCs overall. So. But if it was a Nasdaq, I would probably be in more size. Probably would have been in more size uh, near, uh, near, uh, near open. So anyways, those were the trades and the positions. So, so no, I'm not down 11,000 in this account on Friday. I'm, I'm down like a couple of grand because you know th this is not the real number. Uh, yeah, so let's go through some of the interesting breakouts and earnings movers. This Ross, it's a Russian triple bear ETF. Tried a little bit of a bottom break. And as you know, Russia has been a, on a run since Trump won because Trump is kind of a friendly with Putin and Russia, so they've been, been on a nice run, try to break down 
this rust is the inversed one, so it uh, tried to break out, kind of got rejected of the stick lining 50. But you know, this thing could go, but not really excited about it. Cool. Um, I'm going to try to buy it on dips on Monday. I, I tried to buy it on dips on Friday here in the 2670s, but it just went straight up. So I'm going to retry it on Monday. I really like this kind of a short. can go to 30 or something very easily. And also recent IPO bottomed out, putting in higher lows for a couple of months now. has a nice range here. So uh, as I've been... Um, I've been talking about this before, but uh, recent IPOs are very friendly to technical analysis. Like TA works really well on them overall. So this one had some patent win, um, so it kind of wasn't really a great setup. wasn't tight enough here, so I passed on it. But you know, it can go to 12, 50, 13. So this one tried to break out. Actually had a nice breakout going, and then it faded back into the close. This is a another bottom biotech related. Actually, it's not biotech, but diagnostic and research is pretty much a biotech, I think. Looks pretty good. Reclaimed the 100 day declining moving average. As you can see, this thing has been just riding it down for, for over a year. And now it reclaimed it on volume. So this one looks pretty damn good. Next stop. It's probably 20 bucks or something. So this one had some shitty earnings on Thursday and just, you know, I may actually buy it on the dip if it dips on the Monday. I would love to get this thing in the 750s or 740s and then use like low 7s as my stop. Yeah, I'm going to try to get it on the dip. Looks really good. This, this kind of a short can really, as you can see, it's been going down for years and years. So this is a cyclical stock, like solar, you know, these things go up, they go down, they go up, they go down, you know. Had a big run back in 2013, had an enormous run, went up like 900%, and since early 2014, it's just been going lower. And uh, now they had some, they had some, the earnings were horrible, but... Um, they had some interesting analyst comments, like they're saying that this may be the bottom of the cycle. And uh, yeah, I mean, this thing could go to 10 or something. So looks interesting. Had some decent volume. Reclaimed, again, reclaimed a 100-day declining moving average after m multiple years of being up below it. Uh, VCYT had some news. Thin stocks, I didn't even really look at it. Had some earnings, nothing exciting. Took out the multi-year range. But again, not really exciting numbers. This one is a OTC weed stock. It's a paid pump. Anet has some great earnings. Oh, not great earnings. They, they had some decent earnings, but the, the earnings uh, move, they move was really good. You know, gap up and just straight up. You know, this is this is big strength. I mean, this thing could easily go to 150 over the next few months. But again, I passed on it. I mean, so, I mean, so many already. I mean, CTR, CTRL, uh, NetEase, C, um, uh, ah, w w some, one more, I don't remember the symbol right now. Well, I mean, a bunch of earnings movers, Pixelworks and some others, so I just passed on it. It wasn't really blow up numbers, but it looks good. Anyway, so this one had some, another cyclical, and it's a steel stock, so it's basically, market is basically anticipating better earnings on these. Since the commodity is going higher, this one had a multi, multiple year range breakout, nothing really exciting here. Another earnings mover, kind of a slow moving stock, so. Pretty decent numbers. Um, you know, could go to 90 or something. Why not? But this one looks good. It's just ultra thin, so I just didn't look at it at all. And VRO had no volume at all, like really low volume. So 
and the volume it had, it kind of came in near the, near the close, so I really passed on this one. This one is the one I should have traded. I saw it here at 94-ish, but I just passed on it. But this is just the perfect, perfect looking flag. Just perfectly riding the rising 20 day and then just broke out the volume. This, this is next stop is 100 bucks. Another one had a little bit of a breakout, had buyout rumors a couple of weeks back. Well, probably the strongest stock in the market right now, or at least one of the top five. Uh, I don't know why this one is here. Uh, another one, I was actually looking at it, but it just didn't have enough consolidation. CLVS I talked about, APRI, uh, as you know I've been well, stalking this one for two weeks or so and tried to break out, I actually traded this breakout here that failed and here I just passed on it on, on Thursday when it tried to break out again, there was just no volume, got some volume on Friday but I, I just passed on it again because the entry was really in the 290s if not 280s. Now this one is uh, my biggest regret on, on Friday. Like if you look at it here, I saw it consolidating tight, tight, at no volume, just below this breakout area. And then it midday started breaking out. I saw it here at 76 cents. My mistake was I tried to get in on dips. So I tried to get in at 75 cents and it just, <laughs> obviously I, got, I never filled it went straight up straight up this is just a perfect looking breakout chart it can go to like 150 or something just ultra strong oh this is i didn't want to pay up one penny and that's probably gonna cost me a lot of money or at lost a lot of missed profits another biotech this is spin off had a gap up and just went higher I wish I'd seen it earlier. I may have bought it in the mid 46s, but I saw it in like 47 bucks. So it was kind of a chase buying it there. Okay, so that's it for now.